What's going on, Borns Academy fam? And today I got in here, I got Jeremy Washington with me, owner of Bonafide Physical Therapy. What's going on with you, Jeremy? Not much, man. How you doing? Man, I'm doing well, man. Jeremy, he's been coming down for uh, about the past a couple months working with our athletes. Uh, he works hand-in-hand -hand, uh, with um, Ronald Williams, Tyler Mansfield, a lot of these D1 guys that we have uh, coming in. He works hand-in-hand -hand with him. Uh, I, I brought him in today to kind of talk a little bit about the importance of, you know, you know, taking care of your body, different things like that. So, first of all, Jeremy, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Uh, Jeremy Washington Scott, originally from Vidalia, Louisiana. Uh, I got my undergrad degree from University of Louisiana in Monroe, right. ULM. I stayed at ULM, and then I got a master's in exercise physiology. From there, I ended up going to the University of St. Augustine, uh, the one in Austin, Texas, where I completed my doctorate program in physical therapy. And then from there... Uh, kind of got out, did some uh, different rotations and things, working with athletes. Uh, I was fortunate enough to work uh, with the clinic that works for the Texas Rangers. So I did an eight-week stint there. Then from there, just kind of got out into the world. I do travel physical therapy. So now, uh, normally about every 12 weeks, I move around uh, different parts of the country, just working, seeing different things to try to get a little bit more experience to ultimately end up. Yeah. Just, I guess, opening up my own clinic. Basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, Jeremy, you are, you're a former athlete, right? Yes. So, you played football, Vidalia, went on to ULM to play football. Yes. So, you know how important taking care of the body is, right? Yeah. So, so, can we talk about that for a minute, taking care of our body, what what we should do uh, before we start going straight into it, things like that? I think a lot of times uh, when you're a young athlete, you rest solely on your athleticism instead of understanding completely what your body is capable of doing if warmed up properly. Right. Uh, I'm a big component uh, with warming up, dynamic stretching, actually moving uh, while you're stretching to mm -hmm. get ready to do the things that you're supposed to do. Uh, I would say at least 15 minutes worth of it is always granted. Uh, get loose, get warmed up. You should kind of already have a sweat going before you even get into the activity that you're doing. Right. Uh, that just means that the muscles are warmed up and doing. Another thing that I'm big on is hydration. I think a lot of athletes, a lot of people just in general, don't hydrate right. properly because they don't hydrate. You can't perform properly. Uh, nutrition is key, vital. Uh, me as a physical therapist, that's not really my realm that I, uh, I guess that's not my gym that I shoot in. Yeah. But I do tell people that if you can't find a nutritionist or if you can't find somebody that can kind of teach you different things about that or if you can self-educate yourself, that's very big. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, where my realm comes in is muscles, bones, and tendons. I tell people, warm it up or lose it. Because ultimately, uh, if people don't warm up their muscles, you're warming up the tendons and you're also warming up the ligaments. And what happens is, a lot of times when people have strains and things like that, you're putting stress and unnecessary stress in different parts, mm -hmm. and that ultimately leads to disasters. Normally, imbalances lead to, you know, injuries. Right, right. Okay, so, man, that's some good stuff right there. So... We we tend to work with a lot of younger guys. You yes. know what I'm saying. So is 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 stretching important whenever we're dealing with our younger guys, or is it more important when we're dealing with our older guys? I think it. I think habits start young and then go with you right. when you get older. Uh, one of the biggest things I say is at the beginning of every workout, it should be more dynamic stretching. That's stretching when you're moving. So your lunges, your uh, you know, you're reaching up in the skies, your jump jacks, your different little things where you're moving to warm up towards the end of every activity. I would always say uh, static stretching. Most people would say that static stretching doesn't help because they would say, well, in order for the static or even for you to do a stretch that it only lasts so long. But I kind of argue that fact just because of some fact with research shows that if you consistently do something, mm -hmm. like with anything, it gets better with time. Right. That's just like if you were just to lean on other principles, but not to kind of bore you, but just to say, ultimately, I feel like dynamic stretching, moving at the beginning, static stretching at the end, and then in between, just make sure that you're warmed up and that you're staying hydrated. Right. So, so Jeremy, he's been he's been working on um, a program for Barnes Academy because you know we we're partners. We we, mm -hmm. we partner with Bonafide Physical Therapy because uh, it's important for the kids to know you know the body movements and different things like that. So, can we for a second talk about arm arm care and different things like that? Because Jeremy. He, um, his whole goal is to, you know, find a way to come back from Tommy John's surgery quick. You yeah. Know? So talk to me a little bit about that, man. So basically you got a lot of research out here. You got a lot of 
great physical therapists that have already made huge jumps on Tommy John surgeries, rehabs, things like that. It's a couple guys that you could definitely find in Alabama. Uh, I'm, you know, they're listen. They are really doing good jobs. Right, right, well, right. Kind of what I want to do is I want to kind of lean more towards the preventative side of it. I think a lot of injuries happen over time when you could have prevented that injury. So that's where I'm kind of leaning more towards. Uh, most people feel like when you work out your shoulders, that working out your shoulders is protecting your shoulders, but that's not the case. Uh, I always like to call it, and what some physical therapists in the realm call it, is bulletproofing your shoulders. So that's when you're going through and you're doing the, the movements, the rotations, putting them into, you know, putting stress onto it to bulletproof your right. shoulder to get ready to move, and then you have workouts that actually strengthen your shoulder. So making sure that your shoulder is healthy, or making sure your joint's healthy, and then strengthening a joint is completely two different things. If you're talking about the movement aspects of it. Okay, man. Let's let's uh let's steer away from you know uh, the athletic side. Let's talk personal right now. Did mm -hmm. you did you always think that you were gonna be a doctor? I. I did always think that I was going to be a physical therapist. I probably came up with that when I was about 14 to 15. My uh, grandmother growing up, she broke a lot of bones. We had two hip replacements. We've had uh, a broken fibula. We've had a broken femur. We had a broken ankle. So I spent a lot of time in and out of different hospitals with her. So I ran across a physical therapist when I was 13. His name was Carl Campbell. Uh, Carl Campbell introduced physical therapy to me, and then he told me that athletes, uh, that you could actually work with athletes. Mm -hmm. So then from there, I always knew I kind of wanted the dream. Uh, throughout life, I kind of always stayed towards that dream. When I got in college, obviously, uh, I did not do probably what you should have done. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed college a lot. Right, right, I right. Did a lot. So right, right. When I look, so when I looked up at the end of my four years, uh, my GPA just wasn't competitive enough to mm -hmm. necessarily get into physical therapy school. Yeah. So I went to a counselor. I uh, I told him kind of what was happening, and he basically told me that maybe I should find a new dream. Mm -hmm. Well, that ain't me. Right. So from there, I searched again, and then I actually found one of my professors actually had a doctorate in physical therapy. Mm -hmm. And then from there, she told me, you know, maybe you should go get a master's. We laid out my master's course. Uh, my master's is actually in exercise physiology. It's not right. necessarily exercise science. And where it differed from was I took a lot of classes that I would retake in physical therapy school, but it was kind of just to make myself competitive, to kind of show them that, I was playing. I wasn't necessarily giving it my all in yeah. my undergrad, but when I went to go do my master's, I uh, listen. I hit it out the park. I did good with that. So that's what made me really competitive. But on a side note, uh, once I got done with my master's, the crazy part is I had a really great GPA. And I had a, a great uh, resume, and mm -hmm. I did not get in. Right. I did not get in. So from there, I actually ended up going down and living in Baton Rouge for a year, working, um, doing stress cardiac rehab mm -hmm. and uh then went back through another cycle of it again and then the next cycle of it again i actually got waitlisted at four schools right uh once i got waitlisted at four schools thankfully somebody turned them down i got in and then i kind of just made my way from there so yeah so so do you feel like life life has changed since you became a physical therapist definitely and, and, definitely. and it, it's changed because you've always wanted to work with athletes and kind of Help them do things that you didn't do, right? Yeah. So, so man, I always do this when guys come on, man. You know, we from Vidalia, small town. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely don't know a lot of people that's in the medical field that, you know, that I know personally from Vidalia. So, you got kids down there in Vidalia right now that, you know, want to be physical therapists, but they don't really see it. So, you know, what would you tell a kid right now that's like chasing a dream, chasing a dream, but it just don't seem like it's coming fast enough? Tenacity. I would tell them right now, you got to be a like a dog that's got a bone in its mouth and you don't want to let it go. I think life's going to always hit you. Life's going to hit you hard. And you could always say, well, life knocked me down, but it takes somebody to actually look up and get up. Right. So what I would tell people is that it's people out here that's willing to help you. Uh, I get DMs at least once a week coming from people, you know, asking different things about physical therapy. And I'm more than willing to help them because if I can shorten somebody's rise to get there mm -hmm. i definitely will so i would tell them like stay active don't listen to other people because you have to look at yourself like picasso uh when when a picasso was painting nobody understood what he was painting and now when you look at his paintings people say they understand what his paintings and it's worth a lot of money ultimately nobody's gonna understand your dream but you right and it's up to you to make your dream become true because nobody's gonna give a dream out right 
So. Right. Okay, man. Y'all heard it from Jeremy Washington himself. Please stay tuned. Every Friday, we're going to have Flex It Friday yes. with Bonafide Fitness. Yes. Uh, he's going to be giving us different stretches and different things for us to do at home uh, before we start our process of working out, running, whatever we're finna do. So Flex It Fridays, man. Yes. Please tune in every Friday. Uh, it'll be on YouTube. It'll be on our Instagram and our Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, anything else for the people, man? No, listen. Uh, I just appreciate everybody for helping us out along the way and doing different things that we did. Let's just continue to support David and his booze. And as you support David, you support me ultimately. And just stay tuned, guys. Hey, stay tuned. Y'all heard it from Jeremy himself. I appreciate you coming in, doing this interview at the house. It's the first one I did yes. at home. We're so self-quarantined. We're self-quarantined. Self it looks like we're close, but it's really a split screen, guys. Yeah. We're six feet apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, six feet apart. <laughs> but, uh, hey, yeah. nothing else. Hey, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you.